Hey everyone, it's Sky from British to Athlete here, and recently I saw a YouTube video pop up in my recommended feed by <laughs> Okay, in all honesty, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Kirkskazakt. Don't roast me too hard for that pronunciation. Anyway, the video topic was about milk and its potential health risks and benefits. And while I do think this video is actually pretty darn great, I do think there are some things that were pretty important that were left out of the discussion. I don't want to start any fights or anything like that. I know nutrition can be such a divisive topic and people get so emotional about it. And obviously, I do recommend a very heavily plant-based diet, so I'm definitely looking at it from that perspective. But even that said, I do think this video left out a couple of really important things that really need to be said about the topic of dairy products. I don't have any agenda to like make everyone vegan or anything. I mean, we all should be moving towards a more plant-based diet, but I just wanted to address some really important information that I don't think the video addressed. So with that being said, I don't like long intros and I'm sure you don't either. So let's just jump right into it. Roll the intro. Okay, so the video starts out with just some basic information about what milk is, how it's produced, and how it became part of the human diet as we know it today. I don't really have all that much to say about this part of the video, so I'm going to jump ahead a few minutes into the juicy stuff. Worldwide, about 65% of the population do not have the enzyme after infancy, which means they are not able to digest more than about 150 milliliters each day. So regarding lactose intolerance, remember that 65% figure. We're going to talk more about that later. They end up saying some uh, other, other things. You'll see. Only studies on prostate cancer showed an increased risk for people who consumed more than one and a quarter liters of milk a day. But again, the association is inconsistent and other studies don't find any effect. Okay, so this is some really fascinating stuff. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna go and disagree with everything they say, partially just because I don't, but also just because I don't really have time to deconstruct every little study that they throw out here because, oh my gosh, it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff to read through. So I'm not gonna say anything definitive about how it's wrong. That's just not what this video is about. But that being said, when it comes to cancer, they left out some really important information that I think it's worth at least being aware of if you're gonna try to be well, objective and neutral about this. One thing they left out is about how dairy products, and specifically animal protein in general, is actually going to increase your levels of IGF-1, which is another name for something called insulin-like growth factor 1. This is a very potent promoter of cancer throughout the body, and it fuels every stage of cancer growth. And it definitely seems that vegans, on average, have lower IGF-1 levels. And we also see that lots of population studies are definitely in alignment with that mechanistic data. Now, with that being said, I'm not trying to make the case that dairy undeniably causes cancer and you need to stop drinking it right now. That's just not my point. Hear me out. However, there's another thing that we need to say about this. Since we're talking about cancer, we need to address the fact that the only diet ever shown to not only stop, but also reverse the progression of prostate cancer is just that a whole foods plant-based diet. I know that doesn't, that does not mean that dairy unequivocally causes cancer, but we do know that the only diet ever shown to actually reverse the progression of prostate cancer doesn't include dairy. It was something worth noting. And it's also just something most people don't know. So I thought it was worth mentioning. But here's my point here. Whenever we know for a fact that dairy is absolutely not necessary for human health, and good on them, they actually totally address that. But when we know it's not necessary for your health, and there are some questionable health risks associated with it, why wouldn't we err on the side of caution, especially when it only benefits the environment and the animals who are affected by the industry? To me, it just definitely doesn't sit all that well. Because we can't really deny that dairy does have some associated health risks that we're just not 100% sure about yet. And for me, it just makes sense to lean on the side of caution. I think that would make sense to anybody. Because, like I already said, it's just simply not necessary, and there are plenty of delicious, awesome alternatives. And props to them for actually addressing those milk alternatives. Lots of videos wouldn't do that. Meta-analyses could not find any impact from milk or dairy products on your risk of heart disease, stroke, or your total mortality. 
Now, I understand if some meta-analyses don't seem to see a connection between dairy and heart disease or dairy products and strokes. However, just because some meta-analyses don't find that connection, that doesn't mean we should overthrow the entire scientific consensus that saturated fat and cholesterol are causally linked to heart disease. Scientists don't throw that word around all that often. That's pretty crazy. Despite what some cholesterol deniers might want to tell you, I've gone through stuff like that countless times on my channel. You can watch my other videos if you want to know more about that. But knowing that saturated fat and cholesterol are causally linked to heart disease, as well as the fact that dairy is the number one source of saturated fat in the American diet, cholesterol, it's also up there too. Knowing that, it definitely leaves some room for some suspicion. If dairy is the number one source of saturated fat in the American diet, as well as provides quite a bit of cholesterol, and those things are causally linked to heart disease, it might be a good reason to, you know, limit it. And you know, I was really surprised that they didn't talk about this fact because on one of their early videos, they did this same type of formatted video, but just around meat instead. And in that video, they did address the saturated fat issue, but with dairy, they didn't, even though it's the number one source in the American diet. Fat. Its high content of saturated fats is associated with a higher cholesterol level and cardiovascular disease. I'm not sure if they just didn't have time to fit it in. I don't know, but I thought it was very relevant. I needed to bring it up in this video. There are hormones in milk, but only in very low concentrations. For example, to get the same amount of hormones as from the pill, you'd need to drink about 5,000 liters of milk. And even if you did, most hormones would be destroyed by your digestive system before they could affect you. Which is the reason why so much medication is coated to protect it from our digestion. Now regarding hormones in dairy products, they seem to play this down like it's such a small amount that it could never affect, you know, your blood concentrations or something. But that's just not true. And I'm I'm not sure if they're just not aware of this, but I think we need to go through it here. We absolutely can see that just hours after ingesting milk, people have a substantial increase in female sex steroid hormones inside their bloodstream. That's kind of worrying. Like, what could that be doing to us over a period of a lifetime? These exogenous hormones that we are consuming, and they do, in fact, statistically significantly raise our blood concentrations of those hormones. And I've also seen people critique this study saying, yes, but it's just a temporary increase of hormones. Here's what I have to say about that. Most of our lives are actually lived in a postprandial, which means an after meal type of setting. And considering the fact that most people consume way more dairy than they probably should, you know, several times a day, this is kind of worrying. They're going to be going through most of their lives with elevated female sex hormones inside their body. And I'm not sure if they were just not aware of this whenever putting this video together. I, I just don't know. But again, we needed to go over it here. Now they go on to talk about allergies and intolerances, but I wanna add one thing to this. And you know, knowing my channel, it's called Arthritis to Athlete. You might know that I suffered from a crippling form of spinal arthritis for a long time before getting my health back on track and living a normal life with a whole foods plant-based diet. Dairy seems to be hugely influential in the expression of symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis and possibly even its development. We're not sure, but man, people seem to benefit amazingly when they get it out of their diet. Their joint pain just vanishes. In fact, I remember a time whenever I was really in a rough place and I had just started getting some real improvement and I was on a baseline, what they call elimination diet, just some real basic foods and I was pretty stable. My pain levels were pretty consistent for a long time. And then I tried reintroducing one food at a time, very systematically. And whenever I tried any amount of dairy products, even, you know, free range, grass fed, no lactose, fill in the blank, whatever type of milk, I could feel it within hours. My joint pain just came right back. And I mean, it came back with a vengeance. And this happened several times. It's not, it's not like it was just one-off time and I was a placebo or whatever, and a lot of other people benefit greatly and we have studies backing this up. People with arthritic conditions, you really need to be getting dairy out of your diet, and especially people with intolerances as well. And like the video already pointed out, that's 65% of people. So we need to take that with a grain of salt. You know, the dairy industry continues to market these things as if they are, you know, holy and essential and we need them and they're super healthy for everybody when we know that's just patently false. That is just utter nonsense. Anyway, odd little tangent over, let's get back on track. Milk production has a significant impact on the global climate. 
about 33% of cropland is used to feed grazing animals, including dairy cattle. Even though the carbon footprint of dairy products has declined since 1990, dairy production is still responsible for 3% of all greenhouse gas emissions, even more than all aeroplanes combined. Milk is a huge industry, and sadly most of its production in factory farms causes incredible suffering. Cows are impregnated over and over, separated from their young shortly after birth, and slaughtered once their tortured bodies are not productive anymore. We can't ignore that much of the milk we consume stems from an industry that is basically torture and contributes to climate change. So yeah, I've really got to give these guys credit where credit is due because they really went in about the environmental benefits of decreasing dairy consumption as well as the ethical concerns within the actual dairy industry itself. I find that super admirable. Most videos on this topic probably wouldn't even go into that because most people, well, let's just be honest, they kind of feel really uncomfortable talking about this stuff because it doesn't make them feel good. And if I'm honest with myself, I would definitely say that the environmental and ethical benefits of decreasing dairy consumption have a little more evidence behind them than some of the health claims. Anyway, with that said, I'm sure you guys all know, I definitely don't support dairy as a food. Even if it was healthy, the way the industry does things, like, gosh, I don't wanna support that crap. So even if you could just totally throw the health claims out the window, I would still say, heck, let's decrease dairy consumption. And I'm really glad that this video kind of had that perspective in it. So props to Kirk's Kazak, Kirk's Kazak, that, that, that their, their video, props to them. As with almost any topic, milk is complicated. It's not harmful for the majority of the population, and it's crucial for many people around the world. So I'm not really sure what they mean by this statement because as you saw, they cited in their own video that 65% of the world's population is lactose intolerant. But then here they say that it's not harmful from the majority of the population. I mean, by definition, a majority is more than 50%, and uh, 65 is more than 50. I don't know if I'm missing something, but I'm not sure how they're reconciling those two things. If 65% of the people are lactose intolerant, then they're not having a good time when they consume dairy products. I'm lactose intolerant. I am lactose intolerant. <laughs> I always try to look at things in kind of an objective way, thinking, well, okay, hold on, let's step back here. What if I'm wrong? I gotta think about that. But I'm really not certain what this is in their video. I'm not sure if it's an oversight or what. But if they did intentionally put that in their video, I mean, that is one heck of a misleading statement. I mean, I don't know how you could disagree with that. Anyway, I'm not gonna bash him too hard for that because, you know, I just don't know. But I do think that was important that I put in the video. Whether it was intentional or not, it doesn't really matter. It's still a pretty misleading statement. So. All things equal, take with that what you may. So, in summary, this is a really great video. I think it's gonna get people thinking about their choices when it comes to dairy products, but at the same time, I do think it just left out a couple things, mostly on the health side, where it's just kind of important things that I feel like people should know some of the risks that they're taking if they so choose to consume dairy products. But it is just my opinion at the end of the day, so take with it what you may, and Kirkskazogd, I think that's how you say the name. If by some internet miracle you are watching this video, well, thanks for watching first off, that's awesome. But don't take this too hard. I just wanted to clear some things up in that video and I think there were a few things that you just probably should have put in the video that, who, who knows, you probably just weren't even aware of some of these things, so I can't fault you. So with all due respect, I gotta thank you for making the video, Kirk's Kazak. I think that's right. It was a really informative video. All right, and I think we'll wrap it up there. If you got to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. And as always, if you got any value out of this video, please consider adding value back to my channel by liking, commenting, and hitting that subscribe button, as well as the bell icon next to it. That really helps my channel out. Alrighty, and with that, I will see you guys very, very soon. And God bless.